So let's talk about measuring the economy and all this economic activity at the macro level for a country or even globally. Countries measure their economies to determine how, whether the country is, the economy is expanding and if so, how fast, whether it's contracting, if so, how fast, whether corrective action is necessary to um, mitigate the risk of some of these more serious like hyperinflation on the one hand or de deflation on the other hand um, and try to take some corrective action or interventions. Uh, one of the most commonly used measures is called gross domestic product or GDP. You'll hear about this all the time. The GDP is the sum of all goods and services produced in a country during a given year. It does not include products or profits from the company's overseas operations. A company, the US-based company that's selling overseas, those profits are not included. But it does include profits earned by foreign countries, foreign companies that are operating within the US. However, when the foreign sales, whenever we measure GDP per capita, that doesn't include these uh, foreign sales in the, in, in the US. But it's a it's the most important measure that says where the where the economy is, what's the total purchasing um, that's going on within the economy, and hopefully that's continuing to increase, which means that the there room there's jobs being developed and, and people are being able, able to work and they're able to get wages and they're able to purchase things. This table here describes some other ways that we evaluate the economy. I'll mention each of these uh, uh, briefly. A trade balance is uh, the difference between the exports and imports for a particular entity for a particular economy. If the balance is negative, as is for the US, it has been since the mid, mid 80s, it's called a trade deficit. It's generally viewed as un unhealthy in the sense that we're buying more imports than we're selling abroad. So there's a net outflow of capital um, purchasing from foreign entities. Consumer price index is another one. This measures the changes in the prices of goods. It's a basket of goods. It's a measurement of the average kind of things people buy and what the prices of those are and how they go up and down based upon consumption in urban households is the measure. Per capita income in, uh, indicates the average income level for Americans. Uh, this is useful in determining how much the individual, the average consumer, uh, has to spend, how much money they're earning. The unemployment rate indicates how many working age Americans are not working who would otherwise want to work. That is, they are looking for something to do, but they can't find a job. Americans who don't work in the traditional sense, like house husbands or housewives, they're not accounted for in unemployment because they're not looking for work. They're not looking for a wage earning job. Um, inflation monitors the price increases in consumer goods and services over time. Uh, this is used to determine if the cost of goods and services are going up faster than worker compensa compensation, which could ultimately be a, a challenge because if prices are going up too fast, then people will want to buy something sooner rather than later before the price goes up and this could increase prices and cause this hyperinflation problem we've described before. Um, worker productivity is uh, in the news a lot. Um, it's the amount of goods and services produced for each hour work, each hour of work. Productivity should be increasing because we have much use of machines and knowledge work and computers. So every hour somebody works, there ought to be more goods and services produced. So that's measured closely to see how well we're using these kinds of new technologies and other types of quote productivity enhancing uh, structure that we put in place to um, increase the amount of productivity that an individual worker would would generate. Now, it, you, you got to remember this is an aggregate measure that just gives a sense of the output versus the labor force. It doesn't talk about how hard individuals are working or how smart individuals are working. 
It's more just we can produce this much with this much labor. And so it's a macro measure. Got to re always remember that. It doesn't really say people aren't working hard or whatever. That's not re related to that. It's, it, the word seems to have that connotation, but that's really not what it means. In the next and our last lecture, we'll put all of this together into a historical context.